Hi, my name is Christy Carrolls, and I'm a Solutions Engineer with McAfee. And today we're going to provide a demonstration of McAfee Active Response by identifying a remote access Trojan, or a RAT, that is connected to a command and control server, as well as pivoting off an IOC to detect other systems that have also been compromised. So hopefully you enjoy this demo. Let's get started. To set the stage for this demonstration, you'll notice I have a couple of virtual machines currently running, Win1005. This is actually my command and control server, and I have Dark Comet running. You'll notice I already have a backdoor into virtual machine Win1004, which is running right here. And what we're then going to do is we're going to exploit Win1003, which is another virtual machine that I have running, and we're going to open up a backdoor here as well. On Win1003, You'll notice we have a file called award.exe. And you know, if a user receives this file, you know, they always want to be uh, recognized, so we're going to double click and launch this file. Hey, congrats on your award. Okay. Well, what happened here? You'll notice it just opened up a back door into our dark comet and we've just been owned. We've just been compromised. So this actually can happen very easily, sending information back to a command and control server, and there can be a number of things that can be done from this command and control. By using Dark Comment, there's a lot of really cool stuff that we can do. Um, you know, some fun functions like sending a message box. So if I double click this and I send, you'll notice it automatically sends a message over to my host. So it's some really neat things. If we just navigate through, there's system functions, uh, remote scripting that can be done, but now that we have this backdoor utilizing this command and control server, anything can happen on this host. Now, what's actually just happened and what information was sent to EPO and what can we do about it? Now we're in our EPO and we're going to go over to our active response workspace and what we're going to do here is we're going to see the possible risky behavior and then take a look at how we can actually stop the process and remove the threat that's been on these hosts. So remember, we launched award.exe and we're going to click on this. And you'll remember it was on Win1003. It's showing that it has an IP address here and then it was risky behavior and then a high risk behavior. And at the bottom, once it's loaded, you'll see that there's trace behavior for Win1003 and it provides a ton of information about what just happened. So the information was provided regarding these potential threats and it was sent up to our cloud for our cloud-based analytics to provide a list of potential threats in the environment. So these are all the processes that were launched. Uh, could be processes, could be files, registry keys, uh, network connections that are created. And we also score the process behavior based on other things that we've seen and other traces to provide a better idea of whether or not this is risky. We've captured important behaviors which indicate the possibility also of this su suspicious behavior. So you'll notice we have things such as uh, launching files, launching processes, spawning new processes. We can select any of these items and it says process has started uh, on October 2nd. The type of behavior it observed, the name of the behavior, ports and anything else we'd like to know about. It provides us uh, hashing of the file so we can take action. We can actually expand this to give us a little bit better of a view of all the things that happened. We can condense our timeline to provide us better information and then we can select each of these different events to give very detailed data on these uh, potential threats. We can close this and minimize that. And if we go back, you'll notice that we can expand our threat timeline too. It provides us information about our high risk processes, whether it's suspicious or even just monitored. Here we can select high risk and here it just shows me these high risk behaviors. When I select each of these items, even our gift.exe, remember that was the initial host that was compromised for a command and control server, you'll see that it populates all the information about that as well, showing us our possible processes, information about the items that were launched, and hashing of these files. The great thing about this display is we're able to identify different types of things that have happened in our system. So it doesn't just show us processes, but it shows us anything that had been um, launched. It can show us anything from identifying code injection, file access, and even network connections within my environment. 
We also have an alternate table view, so we're able to look at the data in a table-like format, and it shows us specifically process started, what the PID was, and any information about it, and we can scroll down in our list. So depending on what you're looking for, you're able to find it and toggle through different views to make it more efficient for you to find what you're looking for. We can scroll down, we can specifically call out different capabilities and all the different process. So here's our key value modified from a registry key perspective. So you can filter down, you can specifically just call out different items or you can filter as well. Again, this is great for your SOC operator to provide them a better view of what's happening. Lastly, I want to show you how you can filter down. So we only want to show, let's deselect just our network connections, deselect and only find network connections. Now the interesting part about this, if we select one of these items, you'll see it gives us provided information. It also gives us destination IP addresses, port destinations as well. And we can find out if we just click the destination IP, let's toggle back to our main view. So I've zoomed in to provide a more detailed view. And here's my network connection. You'll notice if I select this destination IP and I can find network flows for this IP address, it can show me all the systems that are also connected to this network address. It toggled to our active res response search screen and created the search directly for me. And what it's doing is it's showing me all of my hosts that are connected to this destination IP. It's a little scary, right? I've uh, 01, 03, and 04 are all connected to these systems. Now let's toggle back to our command and control server. And remember, let's go ahead and close this window. We have these two hosts that are connected directly to this command and control. And uh, remember all the fun things that we can do. We can create the message boxes. We can do scripting, etc. Spy functions, webcam capture if they had a webcam on those hosts. One of the interesting malicious things that we can do, so we can actually just right click on this host and here's some quick settings we can do. We can do a quick open window and we can do a remote desktop um, and select the monitor to display and we can actually compromise the system directly by using a remote desktop. Now what we'll do is we're going to show active response remediating the issue almost immediately by just doing a few clicks. So let's go back into our EPO screen. We're going to go back to our active respo response catalog and look at our workspace. And remember, we're going to look at the gif.exe right here. So remember it was host 04, so let's go ahead and open up that virtual machine. Actually, let's look at the uh, command and control server. So here we are looking at host 04. Let's go ahead and open up our command and control server and show how we can immediately remediate this and stop this process. So here we see our EPO and all of our functions that we have and we're able to select our gift.exe. Let's select our host, and we're gonna take a host action. From here, we're going to stop and remove this process. Yes, we're gonna confirm this. And you'll notice now in our dark comment window, we have no more command and control over host 04. We see that we still have a back door into Win1003. Um, so how do we go about executing this? Remember, this was a ward.exe on Win1003. So let's go ahead and select this item. We'll go over to Global Actions and we'll make Known Malicious. And what this do is doing is it's telling Thai Enterprise Service Reputation that it's a bad file. All child processes started by it will be killed. Some child processes are not trusted and will be malicious. And uh, Let's go ahead and confirm. And just like that, it killed the process on 03. Let's go ahead and open 03 up again. Remember, we marked this as a known malicious file. So you'll see that we actually have an endpoint security alert. We still have this file zipped up. We're going to extract it. We'll just extract it to here. We're going to try and launch it. But the difference here now is this is a known malicious file. We're not going to be able to launch this application. 
we'll see that it is a bad file and was automatically deleted and no command and control session was created on our command and control server. Quickly, let's take a look at the McAfee event that was triggered. So we'll open up the endpoint security console on our host. We'll notice we have some threats that have appeared. Let's take a look at our event log. The adaptive threat protection repaired this because its reputation, remember we set this in tie, our threat intelligence exchange server, is below the configured clean threshold. So the ecosystem that we have running was able to protect our host and then immediately inoculate any systems that were running this process and provide protection for any future processes that might be spawned. Hopefully. With an intuitive dashboard, we've been able to identify potential threats, perform an investigation on what behaviors were performed by the threats, and easily view information from other threat intelligence sources, all within a single context. After we've identified the potential threat as malicious, we were able to easily remediate the threats and inoculate the entire environment with just a few clicks. Hopefully this demonstration has provided you a great overview on our dynamic endpoint defense capabilities and how we're able to find and inoculate hosts with just a few clicks. Thank you.